Whatever you see yourself doing now, you're marching toward purpose, meaning, and impact. Whatever vision that you hold for yourself, see it accomplished and understand this, it can be done. And the glue is service, belief, caring, conviction, and drive. Hello, my name is Evan. Evan Carmichael, and you've seen him, I'm sure, online. He's a man who showcases motivational messages that will empower you, that will help you to get an expanded vision of yourself, that will move you to another place above and beyond the circumstances that you're now facing. A lot of people are dealing with empty pockets, broken hearts, and, and stress, and loneliness. But Evan, he's taken a stance with his life, and his stance is that you can do better. His stance is that your circumstances don't define you. His stance is that it's not over till you win. <laughs> Some people say, is that over till the fat lady sings? A lot of people quit while she's just clearing her throat. <laughs> Evan, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for that amazing intro. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm honored. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, Evan, I, I, I asked you before we came on, what is your signature message? And you see your signature message being? Believe, believe in yourself, believe that it's possible, believe that it can work out, believe that someone like you can do amazing things. I think, I think lack of belief is the single most important issue facing us as a human species. And I wake up every day trying to solve it one person at a time. Okay, now let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from in you? You're saying, this is something that I want to talk about and and share with audiences around the world and and showcase speakers and their messages and their values. Where, where did that come from? At the core, I think it came from my parents. They're hanging. There's a picture behind me on the wall here. That's me when I'm eight or nine years old, and and those are my parents. And they used to always tell me, "You're Evan Castrilli Carmichael. You can do anything you believe that you can." Gotcha. I want I want you to go into your imagination and go around four or five. And and going there, who would you say was the most influential, impactful person in your life that you admired and looked up to? Who was that person? Uh, probably my mom. Your mother. What's her name? Anna Marie. Anna Marie. All right. Now, I want you to use... Five adjectives and an example. Anna Marie, give me the first adjective and an example. What was the first quality that you admired about your mother? Service. What do you mean by that? Give me an example. She always was and is, she's still alive, trying to serve, trying to help, trying to do something bigger than herself. Uh, caring about her community um, and and instilled that in me too. It's like, you have to go off and do more than just for you. You have to go off and serve others too. Excellent. What's the second quality? Um, belief. Whenever I was not doing well, whenever I didn't get the same grades my sisters got or whenever I got, got into trouble, it wasn't just punishment. There was always this feeling like, okay, I, I can do better. Not that I'm I'm bad, but that I can go somewhere else. And that belief in me helped me believe in myself a little bit more too. Excellent. And the third quality. This is fun. I like this. You're putting me on the spot. This is great. I'm going to yeah. have to show my mom this stream afterwards. I'm sure she's going to love it. Um, yeah. The family. I mean, she's the glue for our family. Um and just to caring for people, remembering little things like remembering people's birthdays. She makes an annual family calendar for us every year. So we all remember, you know, in our extended family, whose birthdays are when. And those little touches um, to recognize uh, and show appreciation and love for the people 
uh, who are closest to you. Okay. And the fourth? Fourth, um, the conviction to follow through. She had a lot of things stacked against her. She did things that a woman wasn't supposed to do in terms of leadership positions and um, running organizations where she was the first, um, she became the first chairman of an educational institution that she changed the name to chair. So it's not just chairman. Um, and so did a lot of things that she was, someone like her wasn't supposed to do, an immigrant woman wasn't supposed to do, um, and she just persevered her way through it. Mm-hmm. I'm getting emotional last and thinking about these. This is, yeah. this is great. Okay, and so, and what's the fifth quality? Fifth quality, um, a, just a constant, never-ending drive to get better. Strive. Strive, striving to get better. Um, that good enough isn't good enough. That you can always do more. That one of the things she would always say is if you have the ability, you have the responsibility. If you can, then you must. Um, mm. Some of those words kind of, every time I walk, I mean, I've got five pictures in my office and they're in the middle. And every time I walk in, I hear some of those phrases every single time filling my head. Excellent. If you wrote a book about your mother, I think you should. I, you know, I talk about my mother, Mamie Brown. I'm adopted, and and I just just a few weeks ago saw a picture of my birth mother, and my my birth mother gave me life, but my adopted mother taught me how to live life. But if you wrote a book about her and what you learned from her and how to live life. What would that title be? And a title that would appeal to anybody, re- regardless of their gender, regardless of their politics and religious persuasion, young or old, what would that title be about Anna Marie? What would that title be? It can be done. It can be done. Oh, I love that. Can be done. And the subtitle? Um, that you, We don't want to make it gender specific. Uh, the subtitle would be Your March to Find Meaning and Purpose. Your March to Find Meaning and Purpose. Excellent. Do you mind if I take a swing at your story? This is a signature story, I believe. Let's go. Hello, my name is Evan, and I, I want to talk to you about your goals and dreams and things that you want to achieve with your life. And I want you to think about them in your personal life, things that you want to achieve. And 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 in my case, I, I'm living the life that I love, and I love the life that I live because my mother raised me to be the kind of person to want to make the world a better place than how it is right now. So I want you to think about something in your personal life that you'd like to do or someone you, you'd like to do something for. And then I want you to think about your financial freedom number. You know, people say money won't make you happy, but there was something that uh, I believe in very strongly. It can make you happy, but the people who say that just never had any. <laughs> Red Fox said money ain't everything, but it can sure make a down payment on what you want. <laughs> so I want you to think about your financial freedom number or doing something, a job or some cause that you want to represent. And that brings me to, I want you to think about your life, living a life that will outlive you. As I look at and reflect on my mother, every time I come in the office, I see her picture and I realize she resonated with the words of Horace Mann, who said we should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. And as you reflect on and looking at your life in and out of the pandemic, and as all of us, I think, are in a, in a place where we, we are marching toward finding meaning and purpose in our lives. I want you to write this down, service. My mother, Anna Marie, she, she believed in service. 
my favorite book says that the greatest among you will be your servant. And it was Earl Nightingale who said that your success in life or failure is directly related to the quality and the quantity of the service that you provide. As you look at yourself and look at your life right now, what service can you provide in and out of the pandemic that will make a tremendous impact, that will make your life count, that will be able to establish you as a person who lived a meaningful, purposeful life and made a difference for others. It was John H. Johnson who, with a $500 loan from his mother, and he built a $400 million empire. He said, there's no defense against an excellence of service that meets a pressing public need. Have a service-driven life. That's what I learned from my mother, Anna Marie. Here's the next thing, belief. You know, when I failed in school, uh, there were times I fell down on myself, but she didn't criticize me. She didn't beat up on me. She just made me feel I can do better. She had high expectations for me. No one rises to low expectations. And she let me know that she expected more. She let me know that I had the ability to do more. She let me know that the grades did not define me. And that inspired me to live an inspired life. That, that brought something out of me that even now I talk about service and, and belief because I know that I'm not just a messenger, but I am the message. When you have someone that can believe in you before your belief kicks in. And that's what my mother did for me. And the next thing is caring. Oh boy, she did not forget birthdays and anniversaries. You know, it was my Angelo said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And my mother, she, she not cared just for me, but for the family, for everybody. Everybody know that my mother has a, a big heart, a hard centered life. And she shared her caring with those in the family and people that she met. It's been said that love, inspiration, and caring are perfumes you can't sprinkle on others without getting a few drops on yourself. Live a life of caring. And the next thing is conviction. Whatever goals and dreams that you are going after, that you see for yourself, you must be convicted in your spirit that you're going to make it, that you're going to do it. My mother, she accomplished some things against all odds. People didn't think that she'd be able to do that, but she did it. She was determined. A lot of people say it's not over till the fat lady sings. Well, many people quit when she's just clearing her throat. <laughs> but my mother, she was convicted. She walked by faith and not by sight. My mother, she was a no matter what person. She's still here now. She covers the ground she stands on. If you're casual about your dream, your dream will end up a casualty. My mother, she was convicted in her spirit to leave a life that counts, a, a life that matters, a life that makes impact. And I think all of us, are called upon to do that. Most, most people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65 because they've not found something that gives their lives meaning and purpose to make a greater impact. And here's something else. Not only must you have a life of service and belief and inspire those around you and caring with love and a heart-centered life and be convicted to always looking for ways to reach higher. Socrates says, a man's reach is to supersede his grasp for what are the heavens for. But the other thing is, my mother had drive. Mm -hmm. She still has it now. You have to have a drive to get better. A drive, something in you. You have greatness built in you. And because of most people's lack of drive, 
Most people unwillingness to discover who they are and whose they are. Most people not taking the time to work on themselves, to focus their mind, to put in the effort and to commit themselves to live a life that matters, that stands out, a life that counts. That's, that's Anna Marie. <laughs> Maria, Maria Anna Marie. Oh yes, my mother, you can tell I'm a mama's boy. <laughs> As you look at your life, here's what I know. Whatever you see yourself doing now, you're marching toward purpose, meaning, and impact. Whatever vision that you hold for yourself, see it accomplished and understand this. It can be done. It can be done. And the glue is service, belief, caring, conviction, and drive. My name is Evan. I'm Anna Marie's boy. I love my mama. Bye for now. <laughs> there we go. I love that. Wow. Man in action is great. Yeah, well, what did you get from that? Uh, I love how you were able to quickly summarize the points, but also bring your own quotes in and all the mm -hmm. things that, that is Les Brown style, you know, mm -hmm. the, the quotes and the parables and the stories, um, and just how you deconstructed and made it personal that, hey, I'm here telling a story to help you get to know me a little bit better. And through my mom as a proxy, you get the message, not just me sharing, here's what you need to do, but hey, here's how I learned from my mom and you can have similar greatness for your life too. Yes, now but here, here where I would go now. And so ladies and gentlemen, as I look at my life now and people might ask the question, why do you do what you do? It because of things that I learned from my mother, the program that I have showcasing um, methods and techniques and inspirational stories and and have it be clean and family friendly because I, I know that what we listen to, we turn into. I've been doing this for years and, and at a time where there's so many speakers out here don't have any sense of decency and shame about the language that we use. We we have standards. I got that from my mother. We've been doing this for years and I never had anything come from my program that I would not be proud for my mother to hear. Mm -hmm. We don't allow profanity in our programming. Les Brown believes that profanity is the strongest expression of a weak mind. Mm -hmm. And as we look at ourselves in and out of the pandemic, oh, words have power. Thou shall decree a thing and shall be established unto you. The things that you want to do, it can be done. Death and life is in the tongue. And most of us speak death. And most of us are watching things that are killing the positive mindset and sense of optimism and hope and spirits in people all around the world. It's a special time and special place. And my goal is to be David, facing these Goliaths. And keep in mind, Goliath laws. <laughs> I got five stones, but I don't need but one. And that one is service or belief. When I got some backup too. <laughs> Man, anybody who knows you, this is who you are. You serve with your life. You want to inspire people to believe in themselves. You have a caring heart. You are convicted on the things that you want to accomplish with your life to live a life that will outlive you. And you have a drive and hunger to get better. You're not satisfied with where you are. You believe that since greatness is possible, then being excellent is not enough. It's my honor to be in the presence of you, sir. I'm humbled. I appreciate it. I, I'm, I'm, uh, 
Thank you. Thank you for that. I'm still working on receiving, you know, compliments and praise. So I, I appreciate that. Listen, uh, how, did, how did you come up with the concept for the program that you have? Uh, which which program? I'm about the one where you're showcasing speakers like myself and you play snippets of and, and crystallize and synthesize the thoughts that we express in our speeches. So I really struggled as an entrepreneur. Um, when I was 19, I had my first business and I was putting in just tons of work and nothing was working out. And the worst day of my life was when I told my business partner that I quit because I couldn't believe that I said the words I quit on something mm-hmm. that I deeply cared about. Mm-hmm. And the next morning I woke up and I said, I, I can't quit. And I had Oprah's uh, voice in my head and she was saying, you just have to find a different way to stand. Like I can't quit, just find a different way to stand. Mm-hmm. And I got the idea of maybe, I, I, maybe I'm not a, a dummy. Maybe somebody's done this before. Who else has done this? And I looked up an entrepreneur who had built a software company before, it was Bill Gates. And I've never met him, still haven't met him yet. One day I might shake his hand and tell him what an impact he had on my life. And I looked at how did he start Microsoft? And I took some of those strategies and applied it to my life. And in short order, um, had my first sale for $13,500. And at the time I was making $300 a month. So $13,500 made a just giant world of difference. And on top of that, it just showed that finally momentum, hope, you know, this wasn't for nothing. Um, and ever since then, whenever I don't know what to do, I try to model success. So whenever I don't know how to speak, I look up Les Brown. Whenever I don't know how to do something else, I go find the person who's done it. I'm, I'm not a dummy. I just need the right role models and mentors and guides for me. And so when I figured that out, I then wanted to teach it. And having my mom's message in my ear, you have the ability, so you have the responsibility. And so I just started sharing the things that I had learned, the lessons that I loved with other entrepreneurs out there, because I'm really just making content for 19-year-old Evan who doesn't believe in himself, who's putting in lots of work and seeing no results. And I hope that maybe my, maybe it's my voice that makes an impact or maybe the way Les Brown says something or whoever else we profile, hearing it again from different voices in different ways, maybe it finally gives them the breakthrough they need to believe in themselves and uh, realize that it's possible. Come on and find a different way to stand. Don't quit on your dream. Find a different way to stand because it can be done. Mm. The goal really is just wherever you are, I want to try to create content to help you have a little more belief in yourself. There's so much negativity around us from the people, maybe our parents, maybe our friends, maybe our classmates, even the own, our own voice in our head is telling us you can't do it. You're not capable. You're not strong enough. And what I found is, the more you can be around the people who are doing it, even if you never get a chance to meet that person, if you listen to if you listen to Les Brown every day, your life is going to change in a positive way. He will pull you forward. And so that's that's my goal is to uh, showcase some of the world's top talents in different areas and have that be your university of excellence that you get to listen to from your phone every single day to pull you forward and help you realize that that you can create amazing things. Well, I tell you, I'm excited. This is a time where you have to, I believe if you're serious about making it in and out of the pandemic, that you strike strategic partnerships. And when I stumbled across on Clubhouse, when you were playing these messages by me, I said, who did this? Whoever did this? They spent a lot of hours putting this together and put my stuff together. I want to reach out and meet them. And and you were so gracious and and opening. And so I want to thank you for that. And I'm looking forward to working with you because I believe it can be done and we can change the world together. And we thank Anna Marie for that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you I love got it. to make sure your mother sees this and tell me what she says all right i will send it to her and just as um as a extra point of gratitude you know when i was getting started in the speaking business i thought i would i would never make it i'm introverted i'm shy my story is not good enough nobody wants to hear from me and when people ask me who's your who do you think's the greatest speaker of all time because i've seen so many and just the nature of what i do it's like les brown you have to go watch Les Brown. 
Uh, and so you've your videos have saved me from a lot of dark moments, have encouraged me when I really needed the light. And it's, uh, again, tremendous honor to be here on your show, getting some live coaching from you and looking forward to doing more stuff together, too. All right. Well, thank you so very much. I'm going to keep this in mind. It can be done. You'll march towards finding meaning and purpose in life. Hello. Thank you so very much. I tell you this, this is your time. This is your moment. There are millions of people that you've touched their lives and when they're in a dark place because of your vision, because of the stance that you have taken with your life, you found a different way to stand that many people decided not to take their lives and, and decided not to give up and throw in the towel on themselves and their dreams. So in behalf of those thousands, millions of people around the world, I say for them, thank you. Thank you, Evan. Thank you. You're a wonderful young man. It's an honor to meet you. Bye for now. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.